Hello, my name is Anne-Marie. I've been playing the saxophone since I was at school and I've been a qualified music teacher since the 1990s. I'm very passionate about music education and that all people, both young and old, should be able to access affordable music lessons. And for this reason, I have created this 12 lesson series of saxophone lessons for the absolute beginner, completely free. Now, before you start learning, even if you've bought a saxophone or you haven't bought a saxophone yet, there are a lot of things that I think you need to think about and I feel it's very important that I share what I know with you so that you don't make any initial mistakes or assumptions. So I'm going to break down this video into three short sections. Number one, why do you want to learn the saxophone and how long will it take? Number two, which saxophone should I start on? And number three, why my saxophone course might be the best one for you. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so why do you want to learn the saxophone and how long will it take? So from what a lot of people have told me, the saxophone is their favorite instrument for different reasons. Uh, some people say it's soothing, sexy, glamorous, etc. And it's also been said that along with the violin, the saxophone is the closest sounding instrument to the human voice. So maybe that's why so many people like it. But whatever your reason for wanting to learn it, please, please, please don't think that you can learn it really, really well, really, really quickly. Now, you may have seen a few videos on YouTube entitled something like learn the saxophone in one hour or two hours or 30 days. Well, some of those videos are very good, a lot of really good content, but in reality, you can't learn the saxophone in one hour, in two hours, in one week, or in 30 days. You can learn something on it, and you may even sound pretty good after a short period of time, but to learn it really well, you have to take your time. So let me put it this way. I've been learning, or I've been playing the saxophone for years, yet I'm always still learning something new. For me, there's always something new to learn. So if you really want to learn the saxophone and learn it properly, it's best to take your time with it, be patient, don't fall into bad habits and practice regularly. And almost most importantly, do not try to learn too much too soon. I've had students in the past come to me saying that they can play a bunch of notes, like seven, eight notes, but they get confused when trying to work out how to play a song that they've heard because they either can't remember which note is which or they cannot hear one note different from the other. Now, this is because they've learnt those notes very, very quickly. They don't have an idea of what a key is or what a scale is. Um, they have no idea. They just know the notes and that's why they struggle, fall into bad habits and a lot of the time they give up. OK, so in my humble opinion, it's best to learn one or two notes at a time, learn songs using just those few notes, then add one extra note or two notes each lesson. Cement those new notes into your subconscious mind along with the others and learn that way. And that is how my series of lessons are structured. Now, how long will it take to learn the saxophone in total? I can't really answer that, to be honest, as that's partly up to you. Now, someone might choose to do one lesson per week and practice once a week. Um, somebody might choose to do two lessons a week and practice two to four times a week. How long it will take you to get to the end of the course is up to you. But I, again, I strongly suggest you take your time. And what you do is you don't go on to the next lesson until you completely know everything in the lesson you've just done. Also, if you're somebody that can already read music or you can already play a musical instrument, you might find that you take to the saxophone a lot quicker than people that are complete novices. And if you're someone that, for example, in the past has learnt a wind instrument, you might have learnt the recorder at school. Well, the recorder is very, very similar to the saxophone. Um, the hand shape's exactly the same, for example. The holes are exactly the same. 
And if you can read music, you're literally just learning how to blow into the saxophone. So that will take you a lot quicker. It will take you a lot quicker to pick it up. If you're somebody that has already learnt to play, for example, the guitar or the piano, it's a completely different instrument. So the whole techniques of it might be a challenge for you. And if you're somebody that, for example, can play the drum kit, well, then it's completely different. But it doesn't mean to say you can't do it, but it's just completely different. Then you have to decide to what level you want to play the saxophone. If you want to be a professional player, for example, it's not just about learning how to play the instrument. It's perhaps learning a style of music. So, for example, if that was jazz, you'd have to be good at improvisation. And that's another skill in, in itself. Then you'd have to think about working on live performing. If you can't read music, some jobs will require you to be able to read music. Then if you're doing like solo work, you may want to have a repertoire of songs. So you've got to learn a lot of songs and sometimes you need to learn them off by heart. So there's a lot of skills and a lot of things you have to think about. It depends on to what level you want to learn to play and where you want to play it. Which saxophone should you start on? So you may or may not have seen that there are different types of saxophones, meaning that they're essentially the same instrument, but in different sizes and therefore different pitches. And I'm going to talk a bit more about that later on. But for now, the four most common saxophones, the ones that are most commonly in use today, are the soprano, alto, tenor and baritone. And out of those four, the most commonly played are the alto and tenor saxophones. It's for this reason that these two are the ones that most people start on, in particular the alto, which is small enough for younger learners to learn on. So once you learn one, you can play them all, as you can play all four of them in exactly the same way. But the way you use your mouth muscles, or embouchure, is slightly different due to the difference in sizes. So in the future, you may choose to switch or even play two different ones. For example, my first instrument is tenor sax. That's what I started on age 14 in school. And I played in the school jazz band. Um, and I love jazz and I still play jazz. And on my tenor saxophone, I basically only play jazz. Um, and I can play other styles of music. I tend to play those other styles of music on the alto saxophone. For example, if I'm doing function band work or funk work, uh, reggae, that sort of stuff. Although sometimes I'll play the tenor. But I think in general what I'm saying is I play both of them. So which one should you start on? Well, you may need to consider the following. Number one, how much money do you have to buy one? In general, tenor saxophones are more expensive than altos. Number two, which one do you like the sound of the best? And to decide that, you have to have listened to a few players. And you've probably done that already, which is why you want to learn the saxophone in the first place. How serious are you about learning on a long-term basis? I'll explain. You can easily get a cheap saxophone, either new or secondhand, on Amazon or depending on which country you're in, on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Gumtree, eBay or any local buy and sell. But whatever you decide, I would recommend you buy something like a Yamaha brand. For me, Yamaha is a, is a brand that's well established. Their saxophones are extremely well made, reliable. Whether you buy a student or professional model, they sound good. And most importantly, if you have a second-hand one and you want to upgrade at a later stage, you can sell it on and still get good money back for it. If you get some very cheap ones um, and then you want to upgrade and you try and sell it on, you're going to find it a bit harder. And if you do, you're not going to get much money for it. So that might be something you want to think about. So it's best that you do your homework and brand new is not necessarily better than second hand. OK, now some of you may be wondering, well, what do you mean by student model and professional model? Well, manufacturers try to ensure that a student model is easy to play, easy to blow into so that a beginner can get a good sound out of it. So they tend to be lighter in weight. The ergonomics, meaning the way that the keys are positioned, make it easier for new, begin new beginners or younger learners to, to play. Um, 
and you just get a nice sound. The mouthpiece will be a nice basic mouthpiece so you get a nice free flowing sound when you blow into the saxophone but it will give you a standard sound. Now the more professional ones they tend to um, be harder to get a good sound out of but only because a professional will by then have an idea of what sound they're trying to get. So they might want a warmer sound or a brighter sound, um, a very loud sound, depending on the type of music that they want to play in public. Um, and the mouthpiece is just as important at this stage as the saxophone. Some people will say it's more important. So mouthpieces can be very expensive um, if you're trying to get a very good one. Um, so to manipulate the sound of a saxophone, you have to be quite skilled. So that's why you have professional models for that reason. And then you have basic models for new learners. OK, so I hope that makes sense. So why might my saxophone course be the best one for you? Well, firstly, I will always tell you that it's best to learn face to face with a teacher because a teacher can model exactly what you have to do. They can answer any questions you may have. And most importantly, they can correct any mistakes that you make, which could later become a bad habit. And one of the worst things that can happen if you're learning by yourself is that you pick up a bad habit and you stick with it. And it's really hard to change it. However, learning with a teacher for some people is just not possible, either because they can't afford it or there's no teacher near to where they live. Therefore, I've created these series of lessons for those of you that are in this situation. But if you are learning with a teacher, these lessons will also be a good reference point for you. So why choose me? Firstly, every lesson is short, straight to the point and very clear. You could call them in a way the idiot's guide to playing the saxophone. Secondly, I try to teach as if I'm teaching you directly. So I will ask you to play along with me and I'll repeat lots of things and make sure that you understand. Thirdly, I take my time in each lesson. The most notes that you learn in one lesson, I think there's one lesson where I cover three notes, but usually it's just one or two. And you do warm ups as well. Um, and sometimes you practice moving between notes uh, without even blowing into the saxophone. So I focus on different things and I'll always encourage you to get something right before you move on to the next thing. I will also teach you to read music. At the end of every lesson, there'll be some sheet music of another song that we haven't covered in the lesson. So you can use that as a practice guide to reading notes. But if that's not your thing, that doesn't matter. I also show you how to play a song without the sheet music. Now, if you are in a country that uses sulphur, I will display all of the sheet music with the sulphur on it as well as the letter note names. Now, it's very important to learn to play in time to a beat. And for some people, this can be a real challenge because they have timing issues or they just can't play in time with other people. So it's best to practice that straight from the beginning. So when you're learning a new song with me, you will also have a play along version, which will either have a click or a metronome playing in the background or a simple backing track. And finally, Every lesson has been designed for both alto and tenor saxophones. Now, if you're still thinking they are just the same instrument, but in different sizes, well, yes, that is true, but there's a bit more to it than that. They're also in different pitches as they are transposing instruments. OK, let me explain. Let's say you're playing in an orchestra and the orchestra has instruments of different shapes, sizes and therefore different pitches. So if any of them are out of tune, Trust me, you'll hear it and it will spoil the overall performance. So you can adjust your instrument slightly at your mouthpiece to make sure it's in tune with everybody else. But to do that, you have to tune it to something. Now, because you can't adjust a piano instantly, all the instruments tune to a piano, which is known as being in concert pitch. Now, there are many instruments in an orchestra that are also in concert pitch such as a flute or a violin. So if you play the note C on a flute, it will be the same as the note C on a piano. If you play the note C on a violin, it will be the same as the note C on a piano.
but saxophones are transposing instruments. Transposing in music just means to change the pitch of the music. So if you play a C on an alto saxophone, it will sound the same as an E flat on the piano. So the alto saxophone is known as an E flat instrument. It just so happens the baritone is also an E flat instrument. It just sounds a lot deeper. So the notes on an alto and a baritone will sound the same, just the deeper ones will be on the baritone, if that makes sense. And if you play a C on a tenor saxophone, it will sound the same as a B flat on the piano. So the tenor saxophone, along with the soprano saxophone, is known as a B flat instrument. The clarinet and trumpet also have B flat instruments in their range. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, what does it mean for you? Okay, so what it basically means is if you want to play along to a backing track or the piano or, or a guitar, all of those things will be in concert pitch, but your instrument won't be. So in my videos, I have backing tracks and piano accompaniments for both alto and tenor saxophones so that you can play along to a backing track and it will sound right with your instrument. Now, there is one more thing I'd like to say before I finish. If you are learning by yourself and you really do not have the option to work with a teacher face to face or online, I strongly suggest that you also work with a tutor book, which is basically a manual that will have all of the diagrams, notes and music that you would get in video lessons. Now, my favourites are this, these ones. This one's called The Tune A Day. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. Um, I've got one for alto and I've got one for tenor. And what's good with these is that it has the charts, the fingering charts in the middle. It has lesson by lesson, similar to how I do mine. In fact, some of the songs that I do in my video lessons, um, they have in these books and they also have a CD remember those right remember those um, at the back so that you can play along there's also another one called abracadabra they're very good um, so you can always have that as a reference point that way you don't have to keep writing down things every time you're watching the videos right so i think that's it so i wish you all the success in your saxophone learning journey and if you are ready to begin with me i'll see you in lesson one Till then, bye.